Welcome back dear students. In this video we will see an example of Java database connectivity that will make your concepts clear. Uh, so these are only you know uh, five steps that you need to uh, work with in JDBC. You need to register the driver as I told you earlier. You need to take a decision which database you are using Oracle, MySQL, SQL Gree, MS Access. I mean uh, Postgre, whichever uh, database you are using, you need to select uh, uh, those driver. And the good thing is, all those drivers are already written. You just need to add them in your uh, program as a jar file. Right, we'll see that uh, method how to add jar file. Uh, but the concept is very simple. Uh, you just need to download appropriate jar file, which are actually driver. Uh, for your database, whichever you are selecting. In my case, I will be using MySQL because it is open source uh, and uh, it is not Microsoft, so I'm using it. Uh, but you can also use MS Access, you can use Oracle, you can use SQL Gree, uh, whichever database you are more comfortable with, you can use it. Uh, but in our class, in our video lecture, we will be seeing how to configure JDBC with MySQL. Right, so the first step is to register the driver, which means to add particular jar file for uh, uh, your database, and then create a connection to the database, creating a statement which you want to execute. Is it a select statement, update statement, or delete statement, whatever, but you will have to create a statement, then execute it, and then uh, uh, you know, uh, you will be playing with the data and before you end, you'll have to close the connection to database. Right, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see one example. You need to install MySQL on your machine in order to follow example of this video. Uh, for installing, you don't, you don't need to do anything. You just write in Google, install MySQL on windows and whatever first link comes in and uh, this one probably so you can just go inside and follow these steps uh, mysql installer you need to download it from here and then you will have to click uh, uh, developer default and once if it is done uh, you will be provided uh, with uh, this type of you know uh, mysql notifier and when you click mysql notifier you will from there Add a server, right? When you add server, uh, you will also be given a client, and that client will actually be uh, a command line a client for MySQL. On my machine, I have already completed this whole process. It's very easy to do. That is the reason why I don't need to, you know, make a video on that. Uh, I want you people to, uh, you know, roam around to see how MySQL installation can be done. But if you are unable to follow the installation process, I recommend you can watch some YouTube videos or ask more from Google. Eventually, you should, you should be able to have this command line client for MySQL. Right, so I'm running MySQL uh, command line. My password I provide. Uh, let us make phones some bigger so that you can see it. 36. Okay, yes, I can do that. Okay, so when this is done, I say, for example, create uh, a database, create a database, and I call it books, right? So when you create a database, you just need to write uh, uh, create SQL query, uh, and database uh, is the attribute with this query, and he, this is the name of the uh, database, right? Now, once if you have created database, you say use books. It means that all the queries, which now I'm going to pass to MySQL, those will actually be applied on books data set. Right, now once if the data set, has, once if the database has been created, the next step is to create table in the database. Right, now say for example, I create a table, I call it book, right? Uh, and this book table uh, will have, say for example, uh, an ID, which will be an integer, uh, title, 
which will book title uh, which will be a variable character of 20 character and then say for example uh, I call it publisher uh, which again I say will be a variable character of 20 character right when you do this it will actually uh, create yeah I missed E in create right so when you create table uh, this table has been created uh, in this table I have got three column the first column is ID which is of type integer the second column is uh, title uh, which is of type of string we call it variable character uh, in uh, MySQL and then the third column is publisher and uh, it is again variable character of 20 characters right okay now if you want to uh, if you say show tables this will show you tables so you can see currently uh, tables in books this is your database and inside this database you have got one table right for example if you say create another table create table author a u t h o r okay you say create table author id integer uh, author should have a name variable character of say for example 20 uh, author should also have an email again this is a variable character of say for example 30 right so now if you show tables there will be two tables show table you will have two tables so one table is author and other table is book right now if you want to see what are the records in the books present there are no record but if you want to see what are the records in the book you will use select query select a star from book right so presently it's an empty set you can see here now if you want to add a new record inside book you will have insert statement insert into books no book insert into book uh, book has got uh, three column uh, book has got three column insert into book book has got three column one is id second is title third is publisher right and then we say values for this record that we are going to add the id will be 12 title would be uh, java complete reference right and then publisher is uh, uh, rocks say for example this is the rocks obviously this is not publisher but uh, i'm using it right okay so we create uh, a new record uh, we say id for this record would be 12 the title for this record would be uh, complete java complete reference and the publisher of this book is rocks when you press enter uh, title t i t l e did I make any mistake in writing title? Maybe yes. T I T L E. T I T L E. Okay. Ah, oh, okay. That's not Java. Eh? T I T L E. I probably need single quote for this. Let me check it. Right. Uh, two. Title is too big. Okay. Okay. Complete reference. Java complete right okay i mean by mistake you can see i said the size of uh, title should be 20 but the title which i'm actually giving is bigger than 20 so it was uh, you know creating uh, trouble okay now let us enter another 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 book eh? 13 i call it uh, say for example uh, say for example i say i call it beginning python and i say uh, okay kiras right so another record has been uh, entered into at uh, this table now if you say i want to see what are the records in this table you can see select a star from uh, book right so you can see under the id we've got 12 and 13 the titles are java complete reference beginning python the publisher is this and uh, publisher is kiras right so you can see my SQL is working properly on my machine. I'm hoping that you will be able to uh, make it work on your machine as well. 
uh, but end of the day you should be able to uh, create a new databases you should be able to insert new tables in the database and so on right okay now the next step if you already have your database available in mysql how you can manipulate it uh, uh, from within uh, a java application right let's run that bean on my machine okay so let us see how jdbc assist us in uh, accessing database from mysql remember you need a jar file uh, to be added in your program and the jar file I have uh, spring 2020 jar file is this one mysql connector right this is jar file that you need in your uh, program I'll show you how to do that in NetBean uh, mysql connection right so this is my program so inside projects and uh, in libraries uh, you will have to right click aid jar right when you add jar uh, you will have to take it to the uh, location where your jar file is existing it is here you just double click it it will be available right okay so simple you can see here uh, first of all uh, inside class class you have a method which is for name it actually loads driver and which driver we want com.mysql.jdbc driver it means i want driver for mysql right and then you need to give url uh, to the database right remember uh, when you install mysql it will run on local host it means on the same machine that uh, your netbean is installed uh, this is the protocol that you'll be using jdbc colon odbc and this is the port on which your database would be running and here you need to provide name of your database so in our case the name is uh, books right uh, all these things i had to write because without uh, this additional parameter of character encoding and use configurations and uh, it was not working uh, so you will have to do it i will copy this code on our lms so that you can have uh, uh, these two additional parameters available with you because uh, when your character encoding is let then you can uh, you know extract uh, all the characters from the database be it uh, uh, in unicode or in any maybe in urdu or sindhi or whatever right but if you're not doing it then you will have uh, some error so you have to do it right so i'm saying that uh, i need a connection to be open to the uh, books data set okay now once if you have created this string for the url you will use driver manager a class in jdbc and in this you will have a method gate connection and that does nothing it just says give me the url i'll give you connection additionally you need to provide username and password on my machine i kept user and password root and root so that it is easy to remember for me you can keep anything but remember you will have to remember it right so in this case I have kept on my machine user password root and root so I suggest same to you right so you need to provide uh, three things to get connection the first is URL on which you want to open the connection second is the username um, and then third is password these two things you will be setting when you do installation of MySQL on your machine right okay now once if it is done then you need a statement object over this connection the, that you have already created you create a statement right you can see uh, this statement is having no argument but when you create a statement you will have an statement object and on the statement object you have got this execute query method which will execute sql query so this query that we were executing inside my sql you can also run it from within java you can run it from within java on a you know statement by calling execute query method what it will do it will give you a result set right a result set uh, will have data in in record format right in row format so when you call next method 
if there is a next row it will return you true and if there is no next row it will return you false so we, we say result set dot next so initially the pointer is set on the first record if there is a first record it will return you true otherwise it will return you false because sometime when you uh, issue a query it may not give you anything if say for example you are referring to a student table in in our case it is not existing obviously it would have returned us nothing but when i say select a star from books you know that we have already entered two books one is this one second is this one so it will give us all the columns and all the rows uh, on this table right and then we say gate int one it means this will refer to the first column right so first time when we are inside the loop it will be referring to the first record so the first record is this one huh? the row when i say record i mean row so this one right i say results it at gate into one it means uh, this first column right and then results it at gate string two because second one is variable character so i'm saying gate string so when i say two i mean the second column and then uh, i say also give me third column right so all these three columns i'm getting you know it will run first time for first record and because there is next record so this next method will again return as true so we can again come back inside the loop and this time we will be getting you know id and title and publisher for second record and which is actually 13 beginning python and keras right now third time when loop goes back you know it will be returning false uh, reason being there is nothing there is no next record right and when this returns false loop loop ends and then uh, we come to the next statement which is actually to close the connection which is actually to close the connection now remember everything that you do related to database connectivity they run a checked exception that is the reason why i'm catching exception they, this is check exception is actually sql exception right so this sql exception you need to catch it right okay unreported class not found exception is also possible so you need to handle that exception as well so rather giving two separate catch block for sql exception and for class not found exception i just give it exception you know that uh, this can handle this can take care of all type of exceptions right okay now if the setup is correct if everything is fine if you have your jar file uh, on your class path which is to aid inside the library folder uh, if all these arrangements are done then you should be able to get data from the record right so you can see here 12 java complete rocks 13 beginning python keras you can see we are able to uh, fetch data from the data set right now let us uh, after getting this let us execute another statement uh, which is insert eh? so if you want to run an insert statement i can write here a statement dot uh, stmt a statement dot exe execute execute exe sqst okay why this is not popping up anyway so i say i'm going to execute query which is insert into book right id uh, title uh, publisher right and then values values are okay id i say 14 and uh, book title now you know that you need to provide book title in double quote and now double quote is already reserved so you will have to use this right and then this so this is opening quote and this is closing quote because if you do not use backslash you know that java will confuse java would, would might think that this is you know end of uh, this quote but we say no we are not ending this quote we are we still want uh, to remain inside this quote but we need this quote in our query so in order to have this double quotation you need to write here slash double quote right so this is for opening and this is for closing and inside this i can write here 
the book title is say for example uh, deep learning right and then uh, we have got third uh, you know uh, column and third column is publisher and then publisher for uh, deep learning is again uh, okay rocks right so i have written this complete query uh, i close you know uh, this is a closing for this opening and i say id title and publisher id is 14 title is deep learning and uh, publisher is rocks when this is done i will execute this query now remember this query will not return your result set why because you are not fetching data you are actually updating data right that is the reason why uh, your result set in this case will be empty so you really don't need to uh, check your result set right uh, let's run it and see what happens maybe here i can write one message uh, system dot out dot print ln new record inserted successfully right just to check if there is an exception if there is an exception you know we will not reach here but if there is no exception uh, this should be displayed let's run it okay cannot issue manipulation with execute query okay it means that execute query is uh, not for insert there is another method which is actually execute update which is actually execute update execute update yes this one eh? execute update this method this will actually issue the uh, you know insert method okay right new record has been uh, inserted successfully let's check here let's check here i say select stuff from books you can see here deep learning which we inserted from java program is also available here right it's it's very simple if you want to uh, play with it i strongly recommend that you do a quick sql course huh? quick sql course right so it should be giving you learn sql eh? code academy uh, it why, why to learn sql uh, manipulation huh? uh, queries aggregate i don't think you should read three to four but you should be able to complete one and two so one and two okay so you can see create table uh, introduction to SQL, relational databases, statements, and you, you should be able to cover, you know, create a statement, insert a statement, select a statement, alter, update, delete, constraint, review, you know, uh, SQL is a very popular, you know, query language. Uh, so you should be able to spend just 60 to 70 minutes to cover at least these basic queries, which are create, insert, alter, delete, update, and so on right when you are okay with it when you have done enough practice on mysql for these queries uh, same thing you should be able to do uh, with the jdbc right okay so if you want to if you, if you run it now you will see that next time you will have the record that we updated previously so you can see here and now your deep learning should be there twice because our program has a date it twice so you can see here and because we have not applied any check on id to be unique so you can see id is 14 14 so for this new book again the id is 14. i mean when you learn basics of sql you will know that how dangerous it is to have uh, this unique identifier same for two records right so I strongly recommend you guys to uh, quickly complete uh, basic course of SQL, uh, play with it inside MySQL uh, database server, and then also, uh, you know, issue all these queries from within uh, Java program by using JDBC. I stop uh, this video here, and when I come back, I will i will i will i will uh, yes i will discuss prepared statement 
right it's another very important concept in jdbc so we will discuss this component as well uh, thank you very much